uh, I guess maybe I'll kind of get you to, to summarize and, uh, you know, part of it ties in with your personal views and also you're something of a communication specialist and you're talking about uh, the importance of communication, I guess, in a sense, and on this particular issue and, and the ability for it. Can you kind of summarize what your column was about? Yeah, so the, the last one was just basically about the importance uh, of us learning how to talk again. Um, you know, it, it, it seems I, uh, I grew up in, I, I guess we're all saying this these days, a, a very different kind of Canada. Um, uh, one that uh, seemed a lot grittier and, and, and a, lot, uh, a lot more eclectic uh, in a way, at least as, as far as the public conversation went. And, um, you know, certainly on this issue, and I'm sure we could talk about a, a whole bunch of others, um, you know, it seems like there's 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 one narrative that's uh, that's allowed, and um, and arguably that you know we're losing the the ability to have difficult conversations. Um, you know, I, I, I teach in university, and and uh, um, man, you know the the amount of kind of trigger warnings and and so on that, that you, you have to give on on any sort of difficult or uncomfortable topic. Um, at least on one side of the spectrum, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, uh, and, and even, right. Even when I say that, I'm kind of like, yikes, right. Because, because you're used to, to having to, um, sort of give, give trigger warnings for one side and not so much the other, but, um, and, and anyway, you know, on, on the, the sort of conversation imperative, you know, arguably, in the public sphere, we're only as our, our democracy is only as healthy as our conversation is. And um, you know, lots of people have said this. I quoted Jurgen Habermas, um, but uh, uh, you know, and when we lose that ability to have a dialogue, and when the dialogue is especially co-opted by um, people with political, uh, with with uh, economic agendas, what have you. You know, I was like Habermas are saying we're we're cooked um, if if we if we can't do it. So I, I rather than trying to dive into the the abortion debate, um, I was trying to hit it at a, at a bit of a different angle, just to say this should be on our minds, um, whatever side we're on, and we should talk about it. And equally concerning to the issue is the fact that we can't talk about it. So maybe we should try going there first. Well, that's just it. And, and I mean, it's, it's, you know, as opposed to the issue itself, I mean, that's a fodder for a whole uh, other shows with people, but the, the ability to communicate on it and differ on it, but still respect the other person's right to do it. I, I'm very libertarian. I am not uh, a man of faith. I would rather the things just be left alone and unregulated, but I never for a second want anybody not to have the ability to argue against that, to be able to say comfortably, I don't agree with you. My faith says this, uh, you know, my ability. And we've gone away from that. We have, we get canceled, we get shut down and it's not healthy. And, and if it starts on something as, as, as divisive and as, you know, hard as abortion, that one's easy because a lot of people don't just don't even want to talk about it, but it will extend to other issues. And, and we can never say that the case is closed. We can't. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I'm with you and I voice this at, at the top of the column that, you know, on, on I, I have pretty strong beliefs uh, about abortion. And, um, you know, that for me, ultimately, there's there's not a lot of wiggle room. But I, as, as you know, a person of faith and with knowing many people of faith, I'm also on the outs with a lot of them because I don't believe in coercion either. Um, so, you know, the vax mandate is, is the, is the obvious example, but, but there's others. So, so while I think this is wrong, I also think it's wrong for me to force someone to do something or to not do something. Ultimately that, that puts me largely in the pacifist camp too, which is another taboo in, in a lot of parts of that, um, subculture, I guess. So, so yeah, I, you know, I, and, and this is the thing I, you know, I think that a lot of there's actually a lot of wiggle room and and i'm going to write about this some more hopefully coming up but you know when when the narrative gets so shrunk um that you know you can only kind of say this uh and not all this other stuff that you have questions about 
um, you know, like, is it, is it abortion at one month? Is it abortion at like one week prior to birth, right? Like if you're on one side or the other, you almost can't even go there. Um, and, and I think we probably could find a lot of commonality if we could actually go there, right? If we could actually ask, ask the questions that, that get sort of pushed aside in the effort of, of streamlining the, um, the narrative. Yeah, well, and I mean, we, I, I, there's a mental attitude, and I think it's gotten worse, you know, with social media and divided discourse and very polarized, this and this, and it's, it's I'm right, you're wrong, you're right, I'm wrong. And we've forgotten that, that basic idea of I can very strenuously disagree with you, but fully support your right to be wrong. And we've lost that. We're you're wrong, thus you shouldn't even be able to say that. And that's a big problem. And that's happening a lot. And it's not a left-right thing. It happens with people when they get too heated up on either side of an issue. They try to shut up the other side rather than uh, d d debate them. And, and it's it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and if, you know, I, I teach communications, and I and I can't help but thinking that 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 those who you know want to control the airwaves um are 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 the leaders of this kind of this kind of assault upon you know nuance and complexity and and um you know the more common sense questions that that bug all of us yeah so did uh, the, the march for life event was uh, you know it's an annual one it's a big one uh, did yeah. you attend that in ottawa this year yeah i did i did um and uh, you know that that was uh, that was a really interesting, um, I mean, how do you encapsulate it? It was a really interesting case in point where, you know, it, 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 it seemed like um, there was one side that, uh, this is the Planned Parenthood side, that was very, um, uh, it, it was very clear, uh, you know, the points they were making, they were trying to shout down it. The speakers, my body, my choice, and, and and it was it was it was definitely much more um, angry than than some of the leading media outlets would would have you believe, um, you know. And then on the other hand, you you have people that are you know quite eclectic. I, I was really surprised at, at that actually, like every age, uh, every size, largely Catholic. I I um, I, I, I would guess. Um, and I'm not, um, but that was fine. Um, yeah, it, you know, that, that side, it just didn't seem as angry, I guess. Yeah. Well, and then, and again, it, it takes two sides. I mean, avoiding the anger and the, the, the extremes can come from either side. I, I, I you know, there, there's a lot of attacks personally or even yeah. physically at some of the protests from counter protesters. At the same time, that there's been some some crazed extreme uh, anti-abortion activists who've you know shot doctors in past years and things like that. But those are the outliers, you know. If if we could stick to the the middle with most people, uh, I, I mean, I, the issue is clearly never going to be settled. But that also means then we're going to have to keep an ongoing discourse moving on it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and and you know that there were. Uh, there were signs of that uh, yesterday. Um, you know, there were people who would who would try to walk up to the sort of counter protest and you know engage and 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 that sort of thing. Um, there was a lot of talk uh, of of people um, recognizing the motives. Uh, this this one woman, it was it was very interesting. She, you know, she had had abortion. 25 years ago and um, she had felt guilty about it and so on. But, you know, in, in her, in her statement, she was, she like pointed over to the and she said, you know, um, pro-choice people do this out of love too. And love for freedom, love for their own bodies and, and actually love for children. And, and I actually it was kind of looking around wondering, you know, how that would fly. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it seemed fine. Here was a woman who had, who had lived, lived the issue uh, in, in a way. And, and I, you know, that kind of, you know, olive branch uh, reaching, even if, you know, I mean, even if it's tough and even if you're gonna make your own peers raise an eyebrow, um, 
I, I think it's still it's still great uh, for the conversation. You know, we all do these things because we think we're doing good and right, um, and um, good to recognize that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, and as I was saying earlier, you know, for the, the right to protest, the right to express, whether it's this or anything else, it's always under threat. There's people saying we've, we've got to crack down on it and we've got to understand it, and particularly progressives. I mean, a lot of advancements from progressive causes came and they started from unpopular protests. They were the ones on the streets. Uh, they were the ones protesting against the Vietnam War. They were the ones protesting for civil rights for minorities in the United States and getting cracked down on by the state. Don't, you know, we got to remember that you've still got to allow views that you feel are unpopular to get out and express themselves as well. And I, I think that's getting forgotten by a lot of people. Maybe I'll ask you, I mean, apart from we see the media all the time, but where do you think that's coming from, that, that push to shut down legal protests? Uh, I, it's, I think it's coming from people, uh, this is just pure theory on my part, and it goes through the media, it goes, but it's really stemming at the government's level of uh, uh, such an ideological confidence that you are right, that you're absolutely right, and that the ends justify the means. They even know that they're doing something wrong, but they feel it's so important to uh, get their cause through, get their uh, goals accomplished, that it's a, a secondary thing to step on the right of free expression because in the longer run, it will be better for everybody. I think it's a delusional point of view, but I do think, and maybe it's an unconscious point of view with some of them, but that's my theory as to why we're seeing such a push. This particular liberal government is more ideologically driven, I, I think, than we've seen probably in our lifetimes. And yeah. uh, when you have, when you're driven by ideology rather than fact, then you start to do things such as set aside rights in order to accomplish your goals. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, any mediator will tell you, and, and I said this in my column, that, you know, when you, when you come into a, a, a Conf conflict context. If you come in on your moral high horse, you're cooked. Um, it's it's not until you you recognize that you know whether the person across from you is 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 a parent, or whether in this case the person across from you is Canadian, and you know my family's lived here for two hundred. Like I have something invested in this, but so do you. And un until you can accept those commonalities, all the moralizing is going to get to anywhere. Yeah, and, and the threats come from a lot of directions. Again, I, I still think it stems from the government, but you mentioned media, and we've got a problem going on there. But we've got a government that's very intent on making the media beholden to the government, and, and it's through internet controls, it's through subsidies, yeah. it's through a number of levels, and, and media outlets, again, whether unconsciously or even consciously, they might say, I'm not going to cover that because we just don't want to shake the tree where our money's coming from, or we don't want to run that column because it's just going where we know it's going to, upset the people who determine whether we're official media or not, or, or social media platforms might say, again, we're going to cut off that uh, discourse over there because it's inappropriate. And yeah. again, it, 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 I think a lot of principal media members, even if they're progressive ones, would like to see open debate, but they're scared to now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you yeah, lose your lunch, right? Um, yeah. I, and I, you know, apart from, apart maybe from all of us, uh, there, there's an interesting independent media landscape in Canada. And, and um, you know, apart from all of us just kind of voting with our feet, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a difficult one to fix. This issue. Yeah, well, we're, we're growing and we're trying, we're getting it out there. And that's why I appreciate, you know, you coming on talking to me today and, and the column you wrote. And, and you said you, you have another one coming up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wrote on yesterday, um, largely because um, yeah, you know, I, 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 it was a different view from where I sat. And, uh, I still did a little little narrative thing. It was, uh, it was, it was a very interesting day. And again, I'm I'm not a Catholic, and um, you know, when you see young people quietly, very, you know, quietly and solemnly um, voicing their concerns, and uh, yeah, I'm a father. of teenagers and uh you know somebody was quite moving so uh yeah i wrote a little bit on it yeah well I'm, I'm looking forward to that and actually it just brought me to another thought an, an anecdote but getting back into the mid to late 90s and i gotta admit i grew up in the 80s i was somewhat intolerant particularly with people in the lgbtq community mm -hmm. and I, I had a girlfriend at the time who actually took me out to a couple of pride events in calgary and they were mm -hmm. pretty small back in those days mm -hmm. but actually it really uh 
I, it was good for me. I mean, this was an mm -hmm. event of free expression with me getting around people outside of my regular comfort zone, getting to know people, and it forced me to reevaluate my thought. And if they'd not been, you know, and again, speaking of that, you know, yeah. 30 years before that, they would have been arrested for holding a pride parade. Uh, were it not for events like that, people like me wouldn't have been able to interact and broaden my thought. So when we shut down things like March yeah. for Life and that, again, we're not having anything productive. This is not going to help. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and I love that you mentioned that the personal side of it, you know, the same thing with the LGBT stuff, you know, it, it, it wasn't until I had friends that were wrestling profoundly with this. These are my best friends. And, and you don't have a choice to sort of slough it off as a political issue or, you know, and, and when you have that personal, to me, that's where it's at. And, and we can't let anyone get into that space between us. Um, I often say to my students that conversation is all we have. Um, and, uh, and so we need to fight to keep that ground. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, I, I appreciate you coming in. I'm looking forward to your column on, on what you observed at the event the other day and, and, and other columns to come in the future. Um, all we can do is keep working on it. And, uh, and again, well, we're, we're not backing down over here. So thanks again for coming on to talk to me today, Trevor. And I hope we get to talk like this again soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Good seeing you, Corey.